Hello everyone, I'll be going over this project inspired by GTA 5's Sticky Bombs. This tutorial will be a different style, being a combination of tutorial and walkthrough of the project's code and how I went about creating this system. To follow this video, you need to have at least some baseline knowledge for Unreal, more or less very basic understanding of programming with variables and nodes, and knowledge of the interface and how to, and how to do certain actions like creating blueprints, etc. I started off with the third person template and gathered some assets for the video, links to them are in the description. If you're interested in having the full project files, it's available for purchase on my Gumroad slash Patreon shop with paid patrons having access for free. Let's get started inside the player's blueprint. First off is the input for throwing the sticky bombs. Its logic starts by checking if the action being throwing is possible starting with a branch with a macro for its condition which i'd like to preface most if not every macro in this video is not a macro because it needs to be it can be within a function or not it doesn't matter inside this macro it gets the length of an actor array variable checking if the array has less than 16 items this variable is named to c4 for future reference after that is an input buffer through a boolean variable and a branch this variable is like a parent to allowing the action so in setting this value to false after we found it to be true is making so this action is no longer allowed to be executed until deemed finished, which is going to be set up here shortly. By the way, this boolean should be set to true by default over here in the details panel. Next is playing the throwing animation via an animation montage, which I'll go over later in a specific animation section. Next, I use a delay to match up the motion of throwing and spawning the C4. For y'all who don't already have an actor, create a simple blueprint actor that will be your C4 and assign it this note. I'll go over setting it up shortly. For the actor's spawn location, this is going to be slightly forward from the throwing hand which you do by getting the socket's location and rotation from the player's hand. The rotation of the socket allows for getting an exact forward vector of the hand and is multiplied by 5 for the distance from the hand, adding to the initial socket location, which of course goes into the actor. After that, I'm keeping track of how many C4 I've thrown by getting the C4 array and adding to it, which uses the spawn actor's return value. Next is an interface function for calling logic on the C4 actor to do specific logic whenever it's been thrown. Before you can call this, you need an interface. In the interface, I have the function previously on thrown, which has one input for actor. Additionally, a trigger function. This has a float input, which will be for the trigger's activation time. Back in the player, of course, you can now call that interface function from the spawned actor's return value. Lastly, for throwing, the boolean variable acting as a parent for allowing the throwing action is now being set back to true. Of course, this is done after a delay of your choosing. Now the input for triggering the C4. Start with a check using a branch and a macro for its condition. In the macro, it gets the C4 array and its length, then checks if it's greater than zero. This makes sure that the player has actually thrown any C4 before trying to explode any C4 in the scene. This branch goes into playing a sound for when the trigger is activated, which of course you can use the sounds I included or another one of your choosing. Leading into for each loop, using our C4 array, this node gets an array and then executes code as many times there are items in an array. So basically, if there's three items in an array, it executes this code three times. Anyways, next A is valid, checking if the C4 exists and it's possible to call the following function on. Then of course, the trigger interface function. This uses a new macro for calculating the activation time. In this macro, it may be a little bit confusing, but basically is checking the range of how many C4s the player has thrown and using that to pick the activation time, which picks those values through the handy select nodes. These nodes are basically asking, is 8 thrown? No. Then from false, go to the next select node and check if 4 had been thrown. Not even 4 had been thrown. Then off false, pick a random value from 0 to 0 0.5, but if more than 4 were thrown, off true, pick 0 to 4.5. Then of course, back to if 8 have been thrown, off true, pick a random value from 0 to 1. Of course, you can customize these values as much as you like. Outside of the macro, after the loop has completed, it clears the C4 array. Alright, now you should have created your C4's actor earlier, but if you didn't, then make sure you do that and open it up. I've added three components here, a static mesh, a physics constraint, and a sphere collision. Of course, set the desired mesh on the mesh component. I'm using this model made by, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher this, Luciano Obolo. Feel free to use 
whatever one you'd like. For everything to work properly, I've changed around some settings. This of course should simulate physics because I want the C4 to physically react to the motion of being thrown. This uses a massive 400. I use this number specifically to give it a more weighty feeling. Then linear dampening is set to 0.5. I found it helped the C4 stop from going nuts and overall just make it look better in my opinion. For its collision, it should generate hit events and then for its collision, it should generate hit events and then I set characters can step on to zero or false, sorry. This also uses a custom collision preset using these settings on screen. Pause if you need to. Now we have this physics constraint. I'm using this so that I could customize the physics on the mesh because the default physics just wasn't it for me. Probably unnecessary, but I made sure to line this box up with the mesh. If you want specifics, I put the Z location to seven. This bit is very important. Over here for component name one, make sure you set this to the exact name of your C4 mesh. I named mine very simple, just C4. Lastly is the linear and angular limits. Use the settings shown on screen, pause if you need to. Very simple here on the sphere collision, radius of 25, then using the custom collision preset, settings shown on screen, pause if you need to. Here on Event Begin Play, I've created a looping timer that updates the actor and mesh location based on these two booleans. The reason I'm doing this is because whenever you have a mesh inside an actor and simulate physics, you may think that the physics affect the entire actor and that everything included would follow, but it doesn't. This is not wanted because we have the sphere collision that needs to be aligned with the mesh. So we set the actor location to the mesh's location, making basically the sphere collision stay aligned with the mesh. And there's also this logic, which I won't go into extreme detail right now, but this does the opposite and is needed for a specific use later. Now we have this hit event from the mesh. This is super important for that stick effect. When that C4 hits a surface, it sets all channel collision responses to ignore and stop simulating physics. Now, instead of just letting the C4 stay in its original position, it was in when it hit the surface, I instead use the surface's information to transition it to a more visually nice looking location and rotation. Before calculating all that good stuff, I, went, I want this transition to be smoother. So I use a timeline with a float track that lasts zero 0.2 seconds with two keyframes that control the floats value. Obviously, you need one keyframe here at the start and then one at the end goes from 0 to 1 in value. Now in this collapse graph is the logic for the location and rotation calculation. You can do this in a function, macro, or just do it here in the event graph and collapse it later. Doesn't really matter. Anyways, from the hit events hit result, I break it and use these two vector values for the impact point and impact normal. Then I add a lerp vector and rotator nodes for interpolating between the start and end values. Both A pins are the respected world version values of the mesh. So world location on vector and world rotation on rotator. These lerp nodes also have an alpha pin, which uses the timeline's return value. From the impact normal, make a rot from X and plug it into the lerp's B pin. This is basically using the normal's X value and making a rotation from it, AKA making the mesh rotation flush with the surface. Finally, for the location, also using is this make rot x to get a point a bit forward multiplied by 10 which is how far it's going forward and add that to the impact point which of course goes into the lerp vectors of b pin the lerp nodes plug into a set world location and rotation node for the c4 mesh off the timeline once it's finished transitioning it's obviously no longer moving at all either through the timeline or physics so we can set the boolean controlling the actor location to false. Then what I do here is I'm pretty much prepping the actor to be attached to a component. So, and listen carefully because it might get a little confusing. This is getting the mesh's transform, then setting the actor's transform, and creating a new variable from the mesh's transform. This is essentially caching it to use for later. Now there's a little delay before setting the relative transform of the C4 mesh. This copies the scene component's relative transform. Then there's another delay where the actor attaches to a component, being the component we hit from the hit event then that mesh location boolean is set to true and set the actor transform to that cast transform variable all right now for those interface events we got to add that interface to the actor which you do in class settings for the trigger event I use a delay that uses the activation time for its duration. After it's done, plays a sound at the actor's location with a short delay before playing another sound. Next, it spawns an emitter at the actor's location. I use a random float and range for the emitter scale. For the emitter, I use a random that gets an item from an array which I put two explosion effects into. Then after spawning the emitter, 
I apply a radial damage. This radial damage node will easily integrate in your health system if it works along with Unreal's damage events and nodes. Next is a function to trace her surrounding C4. First thing to do is a multi-sphere trace from the actor's location. This provides an array of hit results, so I use a for each loop that uses each hit e result that checks if the hit actor implements the C4 interface. If it does, then it triggers the interface function, BPI trigger, with a random float for the activation time. If the hit actor doesn't implement the C4 interface, then it checks if the hit actor is the same as the player. If it is the player, then it starts a legacy camera shake using the explosion camera shake I made, which is also provided in the asset. Finally, probably noticed earlier off of uh, completed on the for each loop, the actor destroys itself. Next for that on throw event, I add a impulse at location to the C4 mesh. This uses the instigator's actor location for the node's location pin. For the impulse pin, I just put the code into a macro, but you can use a function, collapse graph, etc. For this, I'm getting the instigator's, aka the player's actor rotation, so I can get an accurate location in front of the actor and multiply that by a random float for the X and Y values. This gets added on top of another random float, then everything is multiplied by 200. Pause the video if you need to copy all the values. Now for the animation section slash some additional stuff inside the player character because I forgot. Um, from the assets I provided, there's a throw animation. I turned this into an animation montage and assigned a custom slot for something later in the animation blueprint. In the animation blueprint, I cached the main states machine and added it for both these default slots. First, I want the player to hold a walkie talkie as a visualizer for a detonator. So here I have a layered blend set up on the hand to use a holding animation. This node, of course, uses the hand as a blend filter. Next is another blend which is, uses the left clavicle as the blend filter. This blend pose is for playing montages that uses this slot, aka the throwing montage. This is going to make it so whenever the montage plays, it's only going to be the arm blended in and not the whole body. Then of course this blend connects up to the rest of the animation blueprint's output pose logic. Then back to the player, I added a static mesh to the hand, being the walkie talkie model, and lined it up with the fingers to look like it's being held. And I almost forgot for the player's mesh, um, I have these custom collision settings pause if you need to and that's everything hope y'all enjoyed the video if you'd like to hang out with other game devs or get some help on your projects i have a discord server also if you're interested in supporting me i have a patreon where certain patreon tiers get access to project files and get shouted out in my videos which are on screen now have a fantastic day and or night see you next time